This this is my favorite. There you on. Yes. This is my favorite, huh? the wheel hoe. Uh, this one's called the Red Pig. I don't know if the company's still in business or not. It's modeled after the Planet Junior. If you go to some of these old estate sales or auctions, there'll be uh, 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 really, really old ones of these. And uh, like I said, it's modeled after the Planet Junior. There's different implements you can put on here, and there's uh, different attachment points. There's uh, you know front and center, back center, uh, sides in the back, and then there's these that you can slide uh, back and forth. And um, and by and large, I'd say the implement I use the most is this uh, oscillating hoe, or stirrup hoe, or hula hoe, is what some people call them. Um, it's a very thin blade. Um, you want to try and keep it sharp. Um, it should be sharp enough to cut you in order to uh, make the, the weeding easier and more effective. Um, usually I sharpen it before I use it every time, just to kind of hone off the, the little bit of a dull spot. Other implements I, I use mostly, there's other ones that come with it. There's, uh, there's goose foot cultivators, which is just uh, kind of curved points with a little bit of goose foot on the bottom. They can go on these three, uh, three connecting points right here. And uh, I find it works pretty good uh, if you have a lot of grass or broadleaf problems, but with bindweed, um, the goose foot don't they don't come to connect with they don't they don't cover all the ground and so it didn't cut off all the bindweed so I don't use them a whole lot. Most of the implements I use are full full coverage of the ground. So like here there's a, you know there's a blade that's covering the entire entire ground. Um, these are different uh, types of blades. Um, this one throws a little bit more. This one throws a little bit more dirt off to the side. You know, it's just kind of the angle. It just uh, pushes and it throws a little bit out. It's really nice if you have, uh, you know, if you have your cabbage plant right here. You can get up underneath the leaves as you're uh, as you're passing through the cabbage. Um, whereas with a, a oscillating hoe, you would uh, not be able to get past the first leaf without breaking off a lot of your. Uh, a lot of your foliage. So this is good for going underneath cabbage or something. Uh, this blade is really good if you don't want to move a lot of soil out. So if you want to get up close to your planting but that's still pretty small, um, this blade tends to pull the soil in a little bit um, rather than throwing it out. Um, so just another option there. The oscillating or stirrup hose come in different different sizes. I use this this bigger one. I use on my three row spacing. Um, I think if I remember right, my, my rows are 14 inches apart, and so this will do a good first pass. Uh, sometimes I'll still go down uh, right next to the row, and and then I'll come back and I'll I'll just do it in the same area, but just next, right immediately next to the other row. So you end up having two passes between two, uh, two different rows. But this one I use on my four row spacing. Um, so, and, and, and how much did this, this run when you, uh, when you got that? Too much. But uh, uh, the hoe with uh, some of the implements that they sent, um, the, none of which I use. <laughs> Uh, the goose foot and the, um, they have a similar, they have uh, some blades that they sent out, but it's just, uh, it's just like a piece of metal on a, on a, on a rod. Um, and that, uh, see the hoe and those implements cost, I think it was about $250. Mm -hmm. That was about 15 years ago, so I don't know. Yeah, probably twice that now. Um, I don't think it'd be quite twice much. I think I've seen metal ones for about $300. Um, but uh, but then like the stirrup hoe, I think this one cost uh, sixty or seventy dollars. I think this one was maybe forty dollars or forty-five. Um, both of these probably each cost um, I think in the seventy-dollar range. And then and, what's the last implement you've got in your hands? And these are just uh, furrowers or plows. Um, these two actually did come with the the um, the hoe when I first bought it, and and I find these useful. Um, you can use them uh, apart from each other, and so you just hill one way or the other. Um, I find I use that on the outside row, outside edge of a bed if I'm hilling up, like say garlic. Mm -hmm. um, I'll use uh, the, this hoe for most of the garlic cultivating, but then I'll also use these uh, to hill it up. And so I'll just come along and throw 
soil in the row um, on the garlic. And I'll use one or the other of these on the outside rows of the garlic. When I'm going between the rows of garlic, I put them together. And on my three row spacing, five foot centers uh, for the beds, four foot on actual bed width, um, then um, this is the perfect width for throwing dirt into the row of the garlic. And I just do one, uh, one pass down, the, down uh, two rows of garlic and it throws soil up. Makes a nice hill. Um, and then the next cultivation would be with the stirrup hoe. Um, that's, that stirrup hoe is going to kind of cut um, away the hill that I threw into the garlic and then if needed I can come back and I can use a rake like a, a spring tined rake very loose springy fingers and I'll, I'll knock the rest of the dirt out of the row in the garlic um, the next cultivation would be with furrowers again and so given that regiment garlic stays almost weed free without with very minimal hand weeding I did use this, the hillers and potatoes uh, for, I have two rows out here that I put just as a trial, um, but most of the potatoes I use the tractor cultivator. This is uh, one of the earlier hoes that you can use when the, the weeds are very small and light. Um, the brand name is called Rogue. Uh, we get it from uh, Jordan Seeds up in uh, Minnesota, uh, land of 10,000 lakes. Um, that's where I learned how to farm, so I still have a lot of connections up there. So um, These are two other rogue hoes. Here's the one that uh, is uh, quite, uh, quite heavy. Um, and then here's uh, kind of the middle, the middle hoe of the rogue, uh, rogue group. And uh, each one, you know, the heavier you're going to have to use in the bigger weeds that mm -hmm. are taking, giving you more resistance. Uh, this one's nice for some wide sweeps. Um, but this little one's good for getting in between, uh, whoops, <laughs> uh, small plants or uh, if you're just going in for that early cultivation and you're just kind of stirring the soil around. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very nice hoe to work with. It's very easy to, easy to move, very lightweight. If you stand upright, you don't get tired. Um, if you've gotten to, uh, and this is our other one, uh, our other IHO through Peaceful Valley Garden Supply. Um, and I think it's appropriate that uh, it's stamped right on here, uh, China, um, because it is actually from China. I mean, it's where the, where the, mm -hmm. the hoe got its uh, beginnings and, and makings. So um, that's appropriate there. And here's another stirrup hoe that we can use, uh, same principle as the wheel hoe, but um, you can use this one for uh, uh, like between plants. Uh, the, the wheel hoe is going to be mostly for going down alongside the rows and we still have to go through and center which is going through and uh, getting out the weeds between the, between the plants. Uh, ideally I like to uh, take care of all my cultivation with the wheel hoe um, because you can cultivate as fast as you can walk um, and it's very very easy, very quick um, it takes it to, you can really break out a sweat doing it but uh, but it's a whole lot easier than going and you know chopping with a hoe um, mm -hmm. less so bending than hand weeding a whole lot less bending than hand so do you ever wear a pedometer for the summer um, no I, I don't uh, are you afraid of what you might find I, I am afraid uh, but uh, I can tell you that I did a little quick math and I've uh, probably walked at least two, two to two and a half marathons behind my planter, like my earthway cedar, in the years that I've been farming. And the wheel hoe, for each pass of the planter, you'd be potentially doing, you know, six passes with the wheel hoe. So we're, we're up to, you know, probably. And then 12 to 15 marathons. Well, probably somewhere around there. So <laughs> it's uh, a lot of walking. Um, cancel your membership at the gym. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, I like it. I like working the soil and I like seeing it and I like hearing it. And, um, you know, with the tractor, there's, you're just a little bit removed from, from the, the work, but um, not to say that I don't like to do tractor work too. 